Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as you can tell, Amon Cat Remastered has released on Arena, which means we've got a whole bunch of new cards to work with for our historic decks. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're taking a look at a Demonic Pact deck. And Demonic Pact is one of my all-time favorite cards, a 4-mana enchantment saying at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one mode that hasn't been chosen yet between Demonic Pact deals 4 damage to any target and we gain 4 life, target opponent discards 2 cards, we draw 2 cards, and you lose the game. So the way to build around Demonic Pact is that we need a way of removing our own Demonic Pact after choosing the three beneficial modes, or we need a way of blinking it so we can reset it and once again reap the rewards of the three beneficial modes before hopefully winning the game so that we don't have to lose the game to our own Demonic Pact. Although it can make the gameplay very exciting when you can always lose to your own cards. And we've got two main ways of dealing with our own Demonic Pact. One of them is Doom Foretold, the four-man enchantment that says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent, and if that player can't, they discard a card, lose two life, and we get to draw a card, gain two life, and make a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance, and then we have to sacrifice Doom Foretold. So Doom Foretold is a pretty complicated card, but it boils down to we want to have a lot of expendable permanents that we don't mind getting rid of, they can be tokens, so artifacts, enchantments, or creatures that we don't mind sacrificing, and then the opponent will slowly lose all their permanents until eventually Doom Foretold goes away if they have nothing left. So Doom Foretold is a perfect way for us to sacrifice our own Demonic Pact so we don't lose to it, hopefully after first getting a bit of advantage from the other modes. And then another way we have of dealing with our own Demonic Pact is a Yurion Sky Nomad, the 5 mana 4-5 legendary bird serpent with flying, that when it enters the battlefield lets us exile any number of other non-land permanents we own and control, and return them to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. So Yurion essentially flickers a whole bunch of permanents we want, and that includes our Demonic Pact. So we can flick our Demonic Pact, essentially resetting it, so we can once again use the three beneficial modes before eventually losing the game, which we can hopefully avoid. And then we've got a whole bunch of other enchantments and creatures that we don't mind flickering with Yurion to gain incremental advantage. Now we could also be playing Yurion as our companion and go up to 80 cards, but for today's deck we're just playing it in a 60 card deck and it's still powerful enough. But you could potentially play it as a companion as well and just increase your deck size to 80 and you'll be fine there as well. And then another new card from Amon Cat Remastered, of course, is Thoughtseize, the one mana discard spell that makes the opponent reveal their hand, so we can choose a non-land card from it, and that player discards that card and we lose two life. Plenty of life gain in this deck to offset the life loss from Thoughtseize and from our Treacherous Blessing, which is another very important card in this deck. A three mana enchantment that when it enters a battlefield lets us draw three cards, but then the drawback is that whenever we cast a spell we lose one life, and when Treacherous Blessing becomes the target of a spell or ability we have to sacrifice it, but that doesn't include Yurion's ability, which is a bit different since it doesn't actually target our Treasure's Blessing, so we can flicker the Treasure's Blessing with Yurion, and then once again draw three cards, so that also makes for a powerful card draw engine alongside our Demonic Pact. And then taking a look at our two drops, we've got the full playset of Charming Prince, which is also a very synergistic card in this deck, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two Human Noble, that when it enters a battlefield gives us three modes to choose from, we can scry two, which is often what we'll do if we play it out on turn two, or we can choose to gain three life, which can be useful against aggressive decks, and then the last mode lets us exile another creature we own and return it to the battlefield under our control at the beginning of the next end step. So Charming Prince combos nicely with Yurion, as we can potentially loop Charming Prince and Yurion, continuously flickering each other and of course getting all the incremental advantages that Yurion brings by exiling and resetting a whole bunch of permanents we have in play. So that's also a very powerful endgame that our deck is capable of. And then we've got two copies of Burglar Rat, a 2 mana 1 1 rat that when it enters the battlefield makes the opponent discard a card, so we can potentially empty the opponent's hand with our Burglar Rat and the discard from Demonic Pact. Then we also have two copies of Trial of Ambition, another new addition from Amon Cat Remastered. The second half of the card isn't really relevant, but it's just a 2 mana enchantment that when it enters the battlefield makes the opponent sacrifice a creature, and we can then reset it with Yurion to make the opponent sacrifice a creature once again. And then we also don't mind sacrificing it to our Doom Foretold. 
And then we also have the full playset of Mindstone to potentially ramp into a turn 3 Doom Foretold or Demonic Pact, and we can also sacrifice it to draw a card. And then at 3 mana we've covered our Trencher's Blessing, also have two copies of Oath of Kaya, another source of life gain alongside Charming Prince and Demonic Pact. As it enters the battlefield it deals 3 damage to any target and we gain 3 life, so this can also be a repeatable removal spell that we can flicker with Yurion to take out multiple creatures from the opponent. And Oath of Kaya can also target the opponent, so sometimes we can just burn them out by dealing 3 with Oath of Kaya for more damage with Demonic Pact, which can also go face, and then we can reset and flicker them with Yurion to once again deal a whole bunch of damage, so that's often how we can close out the game. And then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Wrath of God, another addition from Amoncat Remastered. Sometimes the opponent goes too wide for our spot removal to be effective, and then we need a good old-fashioned sweeper, and Wrath of God is a little bit easier to cast than Kaya's Wrath in this deck, especially when we have a Mind Stone to ramp it out. And then we've got full playsets of Demonic Pact, Doom Foretold, and Yurion Sky Nomad. And then 24 lands to round out the deck. No need for castles in the mana base, since we've got so much card draw between Demonic Pact and Treacherous Blessing that we usually don't have time to activate castles. And then that way we also get to play 7 swamps alongside 4 Godless Shrine to give us 11 untapped black sources for the turn 1 Thoughtseize, which is quite important. And that brings us to 7 planes, 7 swamps, 4 Godless Shrine, 4 Isolated Chapel, and 2 Temple of Silence, which lets us scry 1 when it enters the battlefield. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and sadly no black mana to cast our black spells here, so sadly can't keep this one. This is a little bit better. I'll keep 6 and then probably bottom... A swamp here, turn one Godless Shrine, turn two Charming Prince, can scry for fourth land. Although the Treacherous Blessing is likely to draw me into more lands anyway. So I could take the Thought Seize, although I think I'm just gonna play turn three Treacherous Blessing and then turn four Demonic Pact, so the Thought Seize won't be cast for quite some time. So I don't think I want any of these. Instead look for Yorion, maybe a Doom Foretold. Opponent on Jeskai. And a turn to Sprite the Dragon, so an aggressive Jeskai deck. Well, I better draw into an untapped land for uh, Demonic Pack next turn. Alright, there's a Swamp, so turn 4 Pact, and we've got a Yorion to reset it. And hopefully 4 damage will still be enough to kill the Sprite Dragon. Legionnaire, so maybe your opponent's on a Feather deck. So yeah, let's play the Pact. And then... I don't think I'm attacking with a prince, although I'm probably not blocking either. Since I kind of want a prince in play. But you never know, maybe the opponent doesn't attack with a legionnaire. Or they have to use a removal spell on the prince, which is fine by me. And yep, there we see the reckless rage. Now if the opponent has a way to save their creature from the 4 damage, like a God's Willing, that would be unfortunate, because God's Willing also means I don't gain the 4 life. So that could be bad. So instead I could decide to just deal 4 to my opponent's face to prevent that situation. I think I still just go for the 4 damage to one of their creatures though. And then where do I want to point it? Legionnaire. Can maybe get out of range with a plus one toughness pump spell, whereas Prime Dragon cannot. Although, yeah, it probably doesn't matter a whole lot if they have a God's Willing here. It's gonna be a fine as one instead. Alright, so we still gain a four life at least. And Doom Foretold isn't bad. And do we want another Doom Foretold? Sure, why not? 
opponent loses a creature. I can sacrifice my Treacherous Blessing, even though it wouldn't be bad with Yorion in hand. But when we have another Treacherous Blessing, I don't think I'll miss the original Blessing too much. Get a bit more value from Demonic Pacts. Although, we do have to be a little careful here that my opponent doesn't end up with an empty board and I lose my Doom Foretold and then I can no longer sacrifice my own Demonic Pact. But when we have a Yorion in hand, that's much less of a concern. Find us one pumping the Legionnaire. Although they will lose both creatures to the Doom Foretolds. So, do I make them discard two or do I draw two? I mean, I don't really need the card draw this turn necessarily. So let's make my opponent discard two cards instead. Because we know we're playing Doom Foretold here. And sacrifice Blessing. Play another Doom Foretold. Opponent discarded Aether Gust and Arcanist last turn. Plays another Arcanist, so we get to draw two cards and then sacrifice the Demonic Pact to Doom Foretold. So and then Probably just play another Demonic Pact. Yeah, play Demonic Pact and then Treacherous Blessing so I don't lose the one life. Opponent will have to sacrifice the Arcanist. We get to gain more life with a Demonic Pact, so we don't lose to a Haste creature plus a Pump Spell. And then Yorion can... Flick a whole bunch of stuff. So let's deal four to my opponents. But my opponent concedes just too far behind, too much value. And Yurion was gonna seal the deal here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, I'll keep double thought sees. Mindstone can potentially be sacrificed to Doom Foretold if needed. And our opponent's on a cycling deck featuring Hollow One from Amoncat Remastered. So what do I take? Probably both a Stinger and Rescuer long term. So let's start with a Rescuer which is probably the scariest card. Sadly can go Mindstone into Thoughtseize. But I think... Hmm, I could also just play the Mind Stone next turn Doom Foretold, make him sacrifice whatever they play. Yeah, you know what, let's do that instead. They do play the Stinger. And Charming Prince can also be sacrifice fodder for the Doom Foretold. And then I can Charming Prince plus Thoughtseize next turn. I could float mana with the Mind Stone first, but that's not going to do much. Treacherous Blessing is also not bad. If I want to hit my land drop, I can play the Blessing. Next turn, the Doom Foretold will be sacrificed since my opponent didn't play anything into it. So I won't necessarily have something to sag the Blessing to. So let's Thoughtseize plus Prince here. Alright, go for Blood, Stinger, Healer. So how bad is Hollow One for me? Next turn it can go Cycle, Cycle and play one mana Hollow One. I guess it would be kind of annoying. So let's take the Hollow One. Play Charming Prince. And we probably want to Scry to look for lands. Bottom both. And we will get to draw a card here. Point has to discard a card. 
Doom Foretold also could have reduced the cost of uh, Hollow One, since they would have to discard a card. So now we've got a bit of a board presence. Opponent discarded a Lightning Phoenix. Can also potentially come back from the graveyard. Alright, let's Thought Seize first and then Treasure's Blessing. Ox of Agonos. Probably don't want to discard that because they can easily escape it. Same with the Phoenix, so we'll just take the Stinger. And Demonic Pact is nice, as we'll be able to gain a bit of life back. So we don't die to a Zenith Flare, which presumably is in the opponent's deck. Whole bunch of cycling going on. So hit for four. Play Demonic Pact. So I shouldn't be dead to a Zenith Flare quite yet, but we're getting close to that point. It's gonna be a Flourishing Fox instead. And a Phoenix. So I could make my opponent discard their last two cards. Which is definitely an option, although then they get to escape Ox for two mana. How bad is that? Otherwise they can maybe just cast it for five mana next turn. Which is also not ideal, but maybe it's not as bad as them escaping it. So I think for now it's between dealing four and gaining four, or drawing two cards. I wouldn't mind hitting my land drop for Yorion. Although, is it the end of the world if I don't? Yeah, you know what, so let's just deal four to the fox. Oath is nice, and then I can hit for four, play another Pact, and then Pact dealing four to their face. Plus the three from Oath is lethal. And hopefully I'm not dead to a Zenith Flare here. They did play a couple cards without cycling too, if I'm not mistaken. The Phoenix. So there's only 11 cyclers. So two from Phoenix plus 11 would not quite kill me. Although I guess the Blessing can deal one damage to me, but I can gain four with Demonic Pact first. And that would be just enough to survive here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice opening hand. Turn 1 Thoughtseize, turn 2 can decide between Mind Stone or Trial. Facing Mono Black Aggro. And uh, pretty scary hands. Although I'll probably just take the Gifted Aetherborn. And then, if they spend 4 mana on their creature, the trial is a nice answer to it, although they did draw a 1-drop, which is too bad. Alright, I'll uh, probably play the trial then. And then next turn we get to go Mind Stone plus Burglar Rats. They probably discard the Demonic Embrace, which they can still replay from the graveyard. But it is gonna cost them a card and three life. Still no creature from our opponents, and Treasure's Blessing is an awesome draw. So let's stab the Mind Stone in case we draw another Thought Seize. Charming Prince will do. And we'll scry two here, I think. Could also flicker the rat and make him discard another card. Yeah, you know what, let's do that instead. And next turn, Yorion is gonna be amazing, so hopefully we can dodge an opposing thought seize. All that are more likely to play creature. And yeah, Yorion is a lot of value here.
flicker everything and my opponent explodes. Just to kind of tell you what will happen, so we will get back Trial, opponent is forced to sacrifice their Obliterator, Treacherous Blessing comes back, we get to draw three, Mindstone comes back untapped for what it's worth, and then Charming Prince can use the third ability to exile another creature, and then uh, we will essentially flicker Yorion. It's not going to come back right away, but then next end step, Yorion comes back and can flicker everything once again. So if my opponent's play is to play Spawn of Mayhem, it will once again die to the Trial of Ambition. So that's why my opponent conceded there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Facing turn one islands. Let's have a look. Alright, opponent's playing blue-white control, and Narset is quite annoying to face here when we have cards like Treacherous Blessing. Uh, Absorb might be a bit difficult for them to cast with Field of Ruin, so we'll take a Narset. And then hope to draw second thought cease to take away the other Narset before it's in play. Otherwise we can maybe kill it with Oath of Kaya. There's Narset. Finds Sensor, another new addition from Amonkhet Remastered, alongside that Illumination which they cycled. Alright, so Oath needs to kill Narset, because Treacherous Blessing doesn't do a whole lot here. And hopefully they don't have a third copy. Alright, so can play my land first, so we can pay for Sensor. And then they'll be forced to absorb the Treacherous Blessing instead. Which I expect they will do here, since control decks don't like if other people draw cards. But then next turn we can maybe try the same again. Then maybe play a Burglar Rat this turn. Sure. I'm fine if this gets censored. Bone and Cycles a censor instead. I mean, it feels like just countering the rat would have been more beneficial for them. These creature removal spells not too effective against the control deck. Let's get in for one. And then... Play Charming Prince. Which can flicker the rats to make them discard once again. And then I think I'll hold the other Prince in case my opponent has a Wrath of God. So we don't overextend. And we're looking for Demonic Pact, Yorion, don't need a second Doom Foretold. Discards Dream Trawler. Well, Trial of Ambition's a nice answer to the big Sphinx. Opponent might also be playing Sphinx's Revelation, another new card from Amon Cat Remastered. That's probably the main appeal for playing blue-white control now. And yeah, that card's very good in this type of matchup. Let's get in for three. And then... Do I just play the Doom Foretold to make him discard a card? It's possible that they didn't want the Dream Trawler because they expected Doom Foretold. So they might have a second copy they'll play now that the Doom Foretold is out there, but then Trial of Ambition can still get it. Alright, it gets absorbed. Fair enough. Just gonna pass. Cycles cast out. 
So plenty of Amon Kett Remastered cards being played here. Yorion, definitely a nice pickup. Hopefully they're out of absorbs. We can pay for a sensor pretty easily. And they had another sensor in hand. Double cycle sensor, could have paid for both. And we're gonna flicker everything. And my opponent concedes. Alright, too much value from Yorion. They were gonna have to discard the cards. Charming Prince was gonna flicker Yorion. We we're gonna get to draw three more cards from the Treasure's Blessing. But uh, yeah, the one card that could maybe pull them back into the game is something like a Sphinx's Revelation into more Sphinx's Revelations to hit our land drops and try and find some answers. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a decent hand facing a Lurus deck, so it could be the Spirit Dancer deck, in which case turn on Thoughtseize is maybe going to take that away before they can play it. And yep, there's a Spirit Dancer, their only creature. So that's the advantage of Thoughtseize. So, I can play Charming Prince and Scry Towards Lands. Trial of Ambition seems pretty strong too here. So, do I want to keep that? Yeah, I think I do. And alright, opponent's just gonna concede. Well, some people complain about the Spirit Dancer deck being too strong, but Turn 1 Thoughtseize is definitely gonna be very impactful against that deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, pretty nice hands. Turn 1 Thoughtseize, turn 2 Mindstone, turn 3 Demonic Pact, and then Yorion to reset it later. Facing Field of the Dead. Now, Field of the Dead is one of the matchups that's pretty tough for our deck since we don't necessarily close out the game very quickly, and we don't have any great answers for lands. Champion of Wits, a nice one from Amonkhet Remastered. Just take the Hydroid here, I think, although they kept a pretty sketchy hand. I could take the Champion, which they're maybe relying on to find green mana. Yeah, let's take the Champion. Typically not a play you want to make, since they can just eternalize it from the graveyard for value, but if they keep a sketchy hand like that, we can maybe punish it. Alright, they did find green mana, sadly. So they get to play Rejuvenator. I'm just gonna play the Pact right away. Spiral. And yeah, I guess we'll just make him discard two cards. Krasis and Golos, it's a pretty good hit. For now we'll play Charming Prince. Scry two, and pretty happy with at least one land, don't need to keep both. I guess we'll play the Trial, can reset it with Yorion to make him sacrifice another creature later. The Rejuvenator is not going anywhere. Now they are pretty close to eternalizing the Champion of Wits, and they top deck Tidroid Crisis, so that's a nice one. So I can choose between drawing two cards or dealing four to the Crisis. With double Wrath of God in hand, maybe I just draw two. Another Demonic Pact. I guess we'll play another Pact and then wait another turn on Yurion. And then we can keep looping Prince, Yorion, and double Pacts, which is pretty strong. Take six. 
Sadly, it doesn't tell you on the cards which modes have been used already, which is something they did for a card like Happily Ever After, where it showed you the little checkboxes. Hour of Promise getting double Field of the Dead. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, so opponent's got eight zombies. I kind of have to play Yorion here, otherwise I lose to my own pacts. So I'm gonna have to deal a bunch of damage to stay alive. So four here. Four to a zombie. Then we'll blink Yuriyoni once again. Now I lose a blocker in the process, which could have blocked a zombie, but I think that's still okay here. And we'll pass. Can also sacrifice Mind Stone now that it's untapped. Ooh, wow, Ulamog off the top. That's unfortunate. Gets rid of both of my pacts. So let's see, Yoran's gonna come back end of turn. I think I have to take it here. And then... I can attack for four. Play Wrath. My Trial of Ambition comes back. Opponent has to sacrifice Ulamog. We get to scry two and look for more action. But Triple Field of the Dead is still going to be an issue here despite dealing with Ulamog. They can eternalize Champion of Wits. Yeah, our promise definitely a powerful addition for the Field of the Dead archetype. Ooh, that's a cool animation. So I think we will fall victim to Field of the Dead eventually, even if we do have another Wrath to buy ourselves a little bit of time. If we still had double Demonic Pack going, we could have maybe burnt him out just by dealing 4 to the face a few times. So that's definitely the game plan against Field of the Dead. So, go to Wrath and then play Blessing. Scarab God, all right. Scarab God can get back Golos, Ulamog. The uh, champion did get exiled, but that's also a nice combo with Scarab God, drawing four cards right away. So do I have any outs here? I guess Doom Foretold does say non-token, so they wouldn't be able to sacrifice the token, but they'll happily just sacrifice Scarab God and then replay it later.
and then we'll oath the opponent's face just to stay alive, I guess. But with them getting back uh, an Ulamog or a Golos here is probably game over. Are they missing black mana perhaps? No? Why didn't they use Scarab God then? I'm a little confused. But I guess I'll take it. They also could have used it on their upkeep for what it's worth. Nickel Bolas God Pharaoh. Well, this video has been a good showcase of all the new historic cards. They get to play Demonic Pact. <laughs> Very flavorful. Do they have a way of getting rid of their own Demonic Pact? Maybe that's how we win this. I guess they can sacrifice it to Doom Foretold. Unless I sacrifice my own Doom Foretold here. Is that how we win? I don't know, it's worth a shot, I guess. They can also deal 7 to me with Nicol Bolas, so they could have just killed me instead. I don't know what's going on anymore. Don't have many options, so we'll draw 3. And that's a Burgle Rat. Could empty my opponent's hands by blinking my own Burgle Rats, but then I'm at one with double blessing in play, so I would be locked out of the game. They did discard Scarab God, interesting. I guess Charming Prince has to gain three life here, so I can still cast spells. But yeah, the Nicol Bolas can just deal seven to our face and kill us. So let's see if our opponent notices. Or if they're just trying to have fun with Nicol Bolas. I guess Demonic Pact can also kill me by dealing four. But yeah, we were dead in many ways. Alright, well, we lost our own Demonic Pact, but maybe not in the way that we expected. But yeah, I don't expect to win the Field of the Dead matchup very often. So yeah, we got to see a lot of the new Amon Cat cards in action, so that was nice. And uh, yeah, the deck's not too bad. Maybe not the best Thought Seize deck out there, but I'm sure we'll discover that one within the next couple of weeks. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.